Hello everybody and welcome to KDH Art Class. I'm Miss Howard and today we're going to focus on some positive and negative space. Positive space is adding stuff to it. Negative space is something that's further away or taken away. So we're going to be using uh, some glue, scissors, construction paper cut into strips. We're going to need something kind of uh, sturdy to attach it to. Cereal box it has been my favorite go-to thing lately. And then you're going to need a piece of construction paper to be your focus. That is what we're going to focus on for our positive and negative space. Alright, so let's begin and we'll talk about this as we go along. First thing I'm going to do is get some of this out of my way now that we know that we need. We're not going to need this yet. Okay, That's going to be our main uh, positive slash negative space. Okay. Here's our examples. I went ahead and I followed some color theory on this. I used some analogous fire colors together. I call them the fire colors because what would you do? The sun or campfire or, you know, if you have an electric stove, what color does it turn when it gets hot? And those would be your red, oranges, and yellows. Of course, pink is a type of red mixed with a little white. Uh, maroon would also fit in there. Um, so any of your fire colors. And I put that for one of them. And then I did the cool colors on the other side. Your cool colors are the ones that are they're more calming. They're a little more distant. I say it's like cool grass on a hot summer day. Instead of going getting on the hot sidewalk, you want to go in the cool green grass. Uh, you know, the water could be blue water, cool. Or if you're in the swamp areas, your water might be green. And then, you know, purple, I thought of grape juice immediately and uh, or grape popsicles, you know, just to kind of help you think of purple. So your purples, your blues, your greens, baby blues, light greens, dark greens, all of those greens and purples and blues would fall under that. Today, I'm just going to be demonstrating with any of the colors. I'm not going to stick to a color theory. I'm just going to have fun and put color in the background. So, speaking of background, your background is usually your negative space. It is not your subject. Okay. So, with this, it's easy to see that the bird silhouette is the subject. And if I was to take that away, this would be your negative space. This is the background. There's really no, nothing in the positive space. So I have to add the positive space to it. Okay. And this one gets a little bit more tricky. And this is more for the advanced ones. Okay. Yes, you have the negative space, that the background that you see there. But this is also a background. So it's almost like, do you want this to be your positive space because this is your subject with this is your negative space in the background? Or are you going to do the opposite? And this is your positive space with this being the negative space. It's a little more tricky because it's the cutaway version of it. So let's get started. So I have my little cereal box here. And I have all these little pieces of construction paper, different colors, and you can cut them. Uh, these things are great for at home if you want to cut some nice straight lines. I just did it with scissors. I recommend a good glue, uh, which is a white liquid glue. You could use a glue stick on this. I am not the biggest fan of glue sticks. For some reason, my stuff falls apart after uh, a little time. 
And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of outline the edges. Now when I'm using the liquid glue, I make sure my orange cap, in this case the top, is touching my paper. And I am not squeezing. I'm just letting gravity kind of kind of take everything down to the tip. And then I might apply a gentle pressure, but I'm not squeezing as hard as I can. I'm not holding it way up above my paper. We're not making swimming pools. Again, I keep my tip touching my paper and I'm adding my glue. You should never have a big old globby spot there where it's dripping down. That would be no, no. Okay. All right. Always clean, close and clean off your tip and you're ready to go. I'm again just going to take some pieces of paper and I'm going to take those little strips, those little lines of paper and I am just going to start filling up my cardboard with these fun beautiful colors. Again, so you can do any combination or you can follow a color theory. You can have just primary colors there, just the secondary colors. Uh, maybe you just want to do those fire colors and the cool colors. Those are your analogous colors. You could just do complementary colors. Whatever you want, but all of it will be beautiful. That's something that's kind of fun about these uh, construction paper companies. They tend to make sure that their colors all seem to go together. So you can kind of mix and match them any way that you want. And I'm not worried about it lining up perfectly on the side. I'm just getting these down. Oh, there's that nasty swimming pool blob of glue. See how it's coming out? <sighs> yucky, yucky. Yeah, you don't want a swimming pool of glue on your paper if you can help it. Okay. Nice and control, not too much. As I'm working along. <laughs> you can tell I did these with scissors because oh, they're not exactly straight across. And that's part of what gives it a neat, fun personality and character. You call them kind of happy accidents along the way. Looks like I just need uh -oh. one more big one down there. Okay. And voila. So this is our background or it's going to be our negative space. All right, the next thing you're going to need, and again, if I'm going too fast, go ahead and hit pause uh, while you get caught up. Like I said, I had everything already cut and prepared, ready to go. You may not have. You're going to need a color of construction paper, any of them, to fit. Now, this one's a little bit smaller, okay. and I did not cut around it to trim it up. Part of me kind of likes it like this, but part of me is like, when I frame it out, it'll look really nice once everything's cleaned up. Okay. So we're going to be cutting a shape out of our piece of paper here, and we're going to cut the inside of it. So this is a little bit more advanced. It's a little more challenging. We're going to go some, with something a little simpler than the bird, but you can make it as complex as you like. Just keep in mind, you're cutting with scissors and you're cutting inside your paper. You're not going to be cutting from the outside edge, which is going to make it more difficult 
to do. So with that in mind, I'm thinking about what do I want to make here. And I can do, I can do a fish. A fish would be nice and easy. So I'm going to draw it in the middle of my paper. And my fish, let's see, I'm going to do my usual great big lower jaw fish. And he's going to have some spiky fins and maybe a nice little spiky tail. And then he'll come up and we'll give him a couple spikes there. Right. He's a fun looking fish. You know. And here's the hard part. <laughs> I made this really challenging. An easy shape would be a heart. But I am going to need to cut on the lines. But I cannot cut my fish and I cannot cut around here. My tail is a perfect spot for this or my fin. I'm going to kind of bend my paper just enough for my scissors to make a little snip and be on the line. Even snip that just a little bit bigger so my scissors will fit and you can see it. There. All right, I came a little bit off of my line, but you get the idea. Here, let me use this so you can see, is where I made my cut. Right, right there. So now I can put my scissors in there and I can start cutting around my line. So I tried to stay on the line as much as possible. I came off a little bit. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. If you accidentally mess up your positive or your negative space doing the cutting, you don't need to have both. It does look really cool when they're side by side. And it's great practice. But you need at least one. So either be very, very careful. And not mess up your inside. Or be very, very careful and not mess up your outside. I'm going to try and make sure I don't mess up either one. So I can use them both. Pressure's on. So this could be a very basic project. If I kept it simple, like a circle or a heart, even a square. But because I made it a little bit ornate, my organic shape is really out there. It's a more intermediate advanced level project here. But then again, it is your artwork. You are free to do it any way that you want. Notice I keep turning the paper. And I'm trying to keep my scissors always pointing away from me for safety reasons. I do little bitty cuts deep inside my scissors. I try not to chomp and I really try not to use the very tips of my scissors. Especially when I'm working with these little details. And you can tell I'm concentrating because I'm having a difficult time speaking. Some of you are probably going, yay, she's quiet. All right, I did it. If you need more time, go ahead and pause the video. Otherwise, you are ready to go. All right, so now I have cut out my positive space because this is the subject. And I can glue it on. Or I can use my negative space. 
this side and glue that on. Once I decide if I want to make a second one of this and use both of them like I did with my birds, then you have a really nice little piece and I can even turn this guy this way and then they face each other. It's kind of fun and it makes a nice little two-piece artwork or one-piece artwork if that is what you prefer. Okay, I'm going to let you create, create, create. And don't forget to take a picture and submit your artwork when you're done. Have fun with your positive and negative space artwork. Bye.